you'll find out later why this green dress is so important. Hello everybody, it's me, Keisha. <coughs> Jokes. What's up everybody? It's Tuesday and it's true crime day. My mom slept on my singing career. Can you believe it? It's Tuesday. My name is Keisha Jackson and I want to speak about true crime today. I feel like it's super hot outside. I can finally wear strappy clothes again. Yes, please. Ah. Uh. So last week I spoke about Moses Satole, the ABC killer. What a joke that guy was. I mean, he was just a terrible person. Terrible, terrible person. So today I want to take it down a notch. Um, I don't want to talk about something violent today. Today I'm going to be talking about Bubbles Sh Schroeder, Schroeder, Schroeder. However you say it, I hope you've heard of her. I only found out about her like two weeks ago. And it's crazy. So, warning. The story that I'm telling today is not for sensitive viewers. It has scenes of violence. Yeah, pretty much. Violence. Anyway, if you are sensitive, don't watch it. Give it a skip. Give it a thumbs up though. Give it a subscribe. Let's get right into bubbles. I'm going to try and move my stories along so that they can be a little bit quicker. You know, I don't want um, your attention to get lost. I don't even know why I'm saying this because I'm probably going to get cut. So today I'm talking about Bubbles Schroeder. Her full name is Yaquiba. <laughs> Yaquiba Bubbles was her nickname. Sh Schroeder Schroeder. Schroeder, Schroeder. Bubbles was born in June 1931. She was born in Great Johannesburg. Uh, there was not much shit about her dad. She, she was raised by her mom. At the age of four, her and her mom moved to Verenigung, where she was taken care of by a cousin because her mom had to go back to Johannesburg to work. So from the age of 4 to the age of 13, Bubbles lived with her cousin and that is where she went to primary school. At the age of 13, Bubbles decided that she wants to move to her mom in Johannesburg and that's what she did. In March of 1948, Bubbles finished school and she moved back to Vereniging to go work for a coal agency. Now, um, she did this without her relatives in Vereniging knowing that she was moving back to Vereniging. I don't know why she did it, but she did it anyway. In May of 1948, two months after she had moved back to Vereniging, she was not loving the vibes there. She was like, I'm out. And she had moved to... Johannesburg. She met a man by the name of Philip Stain, who was 52 years old. I just want to bring it out there that at this time Bubbles was 18, 19. She met Philip at a dance in Orange Grove and then shortly after that she had moved into an apartment with him. It was reported that Philip thought Bubbles was lovely to be around. I'm assuming she got her name Bubbles from being bubbly. Maybe. I'm not too sure about that one. Bubbles was lovely to be around and she was very calm and wonderful. All the good stuff. You know, people always have such good stuff to say about other people when, you know... He said she became unmanageable when she would drink a lot. It was said that, quote, she was a young woman 
and a little loose with her morals. <laughs> so we all know. We we all we all understand what that means, right? She was very sweet except for when she drank. So this is now Philip Stain confirming that she was lovely. She was sweet. Loose with her morals, but June of 1949, one year after she had met Philip and moved into his apartment with him, she had come home drunk one night and Philip had just had enough. So he asked Bubbles if she could please leave the apartment. Shortly after that, Bubbles moved into an apartment building called Dorchester Manor in Rissick Street. I think that's like the middle of town. Um, she moved in to Dorchester Manor with a girlfriend by the name of Mrs. Griffin. Mrs. Griffin said that Bubbles could never hold a job down, but she never seemed to be short of money. So I am just want to piece this all together for myself. I don't want to make any assumptions. She's very lovely, a little loose with her morals, can never hold a job down, but is also never short of money. Bubbles would would go on to not have. A, I can't even say it. Say it like in a nice way. She 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 wouldn't have a job, but she wouldn't be short of money. So she would go on never to have a stable job. Yet she could afford to live in a very nice apartment. On Thursday, the eleventh of August, nineteen forty nine. I can't even talk and do my line at the same time. I don't know why I try. Thursday, the 11th of August, 1949, a young man by the name of Morris Bolchik, Morris, Morris Bolchik, 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 yeah, let's call him Morris, Morris, 21 years old, he visits Dorchester Manor, it wasn't confirmed why he was visiting Dorchester Manor, maybe he had a friend there, um, and he ran into Bubbles, so as we all know Bubbles was very beautiful, bubbly, sweet. So he had met Bubbles and he asked her if he could take her out the following Saturday. And Bubbles obviously agreed to it. So Bubbles was like, oh yeah, let's go out on the town. Why not? The Saturday night, Morris and Bubbles go out on their little date and Bubbles ends up staying the night. Now, I don't want to make any assumptions, guys. The first date. Like, really, Bubbles? Let's get let's get our lives together. Uh, so they go out. Bubbles spends the night. She obviously returns home. And then the Monday morning, Morris goes back to work. And at work, he, quote, boasts to his friend David about his night out with Bubbles. So David is like, yes, this sounds like a great time. Maybe we can make a plan with one of her friends. You know how how everybody is. Like, oh, do you think she has a friend for me? Oh, do you think he has a friend for me? You know? Anyway, so Morris is like, hell yeah, I think she has a friend for you. She's a really cool girl, of course. Let's go see if she has a friend for you. Monday afternoon at their lunchtime, they go off to Dorchester Manor to go and speak to Bubbles about hooking David up with one of his friends. So Bubbles is like, cool, I have this friend named Penny. Let's go and try and get hold of Penny and see if she's up for a double date. So David and Morris are like, hell yeah, you know, they into this idea. Everyone's into this idea. Unfortunately, Penny could not be found at that moment. She wasn't dead or anything. She just, no one could locate Penny. So they were like, oh, well, we'll just have to make it a threesome. Do you see my face? Morris and David head back to work because they have to finish their work day. They can't be such eager beavers, you know. And Bubbles heads off to her friend Philip, you know, Philip, the 52-year-old creep. No, my bad. I can't call him a creep because it it never disclosed. I don't think they would. They never disclosed what they had done with Bubbles, 
it, it was just said by Mrs. Morris, you know, her roommate, that men enjoyed paying Bubbles for her company. It was reported that Bubbles had spent the afternoon with Mr. Stain and they'd had a couple of drinks together and it was just a very chill Monday afternoon. Bubbles then is like, oh, I've got to get back because I have a date tonight. So on her way back to her apartment, she already sees that the two men, I like how I did this instead of this, whatever. The two men wait for her, she apologises, oh, I'm so sorry, I lost track of time, no shit you did, like, what were you doing? <laughs> so they're like, oh no, you know, it's no stress. So Bubbles runs upstairs to her apartment and she freshens up, she does her makeup and she changes into a very lovely green dress. You'll find out later why this green dress is so important. Now they are off to David's home because it was reported that David's mom, Mrs. Pollock, that's their surname, was in Durban and that the three of them would have the house to themselves. The drive from Bubbles' apartment to David's house was about 20-30 minutes because David had lived in Ilovo. Wow, so upscaled. And um, when the three of them had arrived at David's home, David's cousin Harmon was on his way out to go and pick up his girlfriend. And David had said, oh, why don't you guys stay the night and join us? We're just going to have a very chilled evening and have a couple of drinks. Harmon declined because he said him and his girlfriend had already had plans to go to the movies. So at around 7.30 is when they left. 7.30 p.m. is when they left to get to David's home. So they got to David's home at around 8 p.m. I'm, I'm putting the times in because I want, I want us to catch on the timeline of this evening. Just, just putting it out. So they get to the home at around 8 p.m. and David's cousin is like, no, me and my girlfriend, we have plans to go to the movies. We we won't be joining you guys. So they were like, oh, it's cool, you know, it looks fine. So David goes inside and he asks their housekeeper, Irene, to make them something to eat. And at around 9.30, David, Morris and Bubbles sit down for a dinner. At the dinner, of course, they're having a couple of drinks and the evening is nice. Everything is flowing. And then at around quarter past 11, 11.15 p.m., Morris decides to leave. Now, uh, <laughs> Morris leaves because he said it was very obvious that Bubbles and David wanted to be left alone. Now, this is where I got a little bit confused. Me, myself, Keisha. Because Morris and Bubbles had hooked up that Saturday. Only one day apart from Monday. What am I even saying? They had hooked up the Saturday. So it's like, so, so Morris is hooking up with her. But now he wants to leave because he thinks that David wants to hook up with her. So I don't know what situation is going on there. I don't... I don't it, they weren't clear on that. But so, so Morris leaves. Morris leaves at about quarter past 11. David is like, yo, but why are you leaving? Is, so did something happen? Is everything okay? And Morris is like, oh, I just want to leave. I just want to get home. You know, we still both have work in the morning. You're like, that's going to stop you. But whatever, whatever. So Morris leaves and then David and Bubbles decide to go up to David's room to only listen to records. Okay. At around midnight, Harmon, <laughs> sorry, sorry, returns back home with Addie's girlfriend because they obviously went to the movies. He had dropped his girlfriend off. He returns home. David rushes down the staircase to tell Harmon that he wants to get Bubbles home. 
before she passes out because she's had way too much to drink. Remember she had those couple of drinks at Philip's place and they had a couple of drinks at dinner. They went up to his room to listen to records and have a couple of drinks. So Bubbles is like a bit loosey-goosey, you know. Harmon is like, nah, 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 I don't believe you. I'm going to go check this out for myself. So Harmon heads upstairs to go find out. And then he says, it's very clear that Bubbles did have a lot to drink, but she wasn't falling down drunk. So she was still aware of her surroundings and who was around her and what she was doing. She was just a little bit tipsy. The two men then decide to, to just leave Bubbles alone, let her do what she wants to do. And Bubbles decides she wants to have one more drink. So they make her one more drink. It was reported that it was a very weak drink. And Bubbles took one sip of the drink and she decided that that minute she wanted to go home. Suspicious. So at around 12.30, Bubbles is like, uh -uh, uh -uh, I want to go home now because my mom is staying with me. Where did this come from? Like, no one knew her mom was with her at that time because not only was she with Mr. What's-His-Face, Stain. Now her mom's home and she's just been gallivanting everywhere. Any hoozles. So they all go out to the driveway, you know, where the cars are parked. And Bubbles then gets into Harmon's car. In the driver's seat of Harmon's car. And Harmon's like, nah, chick. No, no. Um, you are not driving. And David wants to take you home. So Bubbles refuses that David takes her home. When I'm reading this story, it makes me think, or it just makes me question, why Bubbles would feel uncomfortable for David to be driving her home after David had given her a drink, after her and David had been by themselves from quarter past 11 to 12 o'clock for 45 minutes. What, what had happened in those 45 minutes? I don't want to make it seem like David's a bad guy or anything. It's just that was my first thought when I read this story. Harmon's like, you know what, it's cool. I'm going to drive this chick home just so that I can get her the hell out of here. I'm tired. I just entertained my girlfriend. I don't think I need to entertain another girl. So they are leaving at about half past one. So this process of Harmon coming home, the name Harmon though, like what the hell. The process of Harmon getting home to checking if Bubbles was okay, to giving her another drink, to persuading her to get out of his car or get out of the driver's seat took an hour. So Harmon and Bubbles then drive off making their way to Dorchester Manor in Rissick Street. About 20 minutes later, Harmon returns home and this shocks David because David is like, what are you doing here, dude? What happened to, to Bubbles? Harmon's reply was, quote, that girl is a lunatic. She threw a tantrum because she wanted to drive home and I refused. She got out of my car at half past one in the morning and, well, caught it to two, two o'clock. And David then says, are you crazy? Quote, sorry, quote. Are you crazy? Do you know what the hell could happen to that girl? Harmon then says, yes, I do. But I don't think anything could. David then says, did she say anything to you? Like, David's gobsmacked. David's like, this guy, what is he saying? Harmon then says, yes, she said, which way to town? Harmon then directed her, just follow, follow the bus route down to Oxford Street. And that's where you'll get into town. David then got even more upset with Harmon. Harmon snaps. Harmon heads upstairs and goes to bed. David is worried. David's like, I'm going to jump in my car and I'm going to go see if I can see bubbles anywhere. 
Now it's two o'clock in the morning, past two o'clock in the morning. David can't seem to find bubbles, so he thinks there's really nothing, nothing I could do at this point. So I'm just gonna head home. In the morning, David wakes up and he immediately gets ready, goes to work, and he tells Morris about everything that happened. Morris is like, what the fuck, dude? Why did you let this happen? They then phone Mrs. Schr Schroeder, Schr Schroeder. They phone Bubbles' mom, Bubbles' Bubbles. They phone Bubbles' mom and ask, how's Bubbles doing? And her mom says she didn't return home. This worries Morris, and Morris says, we have to go and see her mom. Like, we can't not show our faces. The last people her daughter was seen with was us. Now, remember I said to you guys that Bubbles was a little bit loose with her morals. Um... Men enjoyed her company. Men enjoyed to pay her for her company. S sounds so wrong. So not a lot of people thought much of this. They thought, well, Bubbles is probably off on another Bubbles adventure. This is now the 12th of August, 1949. 12th of August, 1949. Bubbles did not return home after her night out with David and Morris. Morris and David decide to drive down to Dorchester Manor to go see Bubbles' mom and all three of them decide that they gotta go to the Rosebank police station and file a missing persons report. They filed the missing persons report and David had also phoned the general hospital to find out if Bubbles had maybe been brought in or if they'd seen Bubbles or anything had happened with Bubbles. The hospital says, no one with that name or that description was brought in. Sorry, we can't, we can't help it all. The Rosebank Police Station send out a missing person squad, sort of just a couple of people to go and look around the area that Bubbles was last seen at to see if there's any trace of her or to ask people if anyone has seen Bubbles or, you know, ge general questions you would ask if someone would go missing. Bubbles' body was found 30 hours after she had gone missing, which was at around 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, her body was discovered at Birdhaven Plantation. The place where the location where her body was discovered was less than a kilometer from where Harmon had dropped her off. Are we piecing together her timeline? She was found less than a kilometer away from where Harmon had dropped her off. So Harmon didn't wait, like he said he did point her in the direction and she was walking in that direction. It's very suspicious. I'm not saying he had done anything to her. I'm not saying anything of the sort. Her body was found. She was lying on her back amongst grass and debris and, you know, like in a felt. So she was laying on her back less than 30 meters away from the road. Well, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Her face was then turned to the right of her body. What am I looking? Which way am I looking? This is my right. Her face was turned to the right of her body and her left arm was pressed against the side of her way. I like the way I'm trying to do this. So she was like this. It was perfectly placed, her body. So weird was shoeless and her coat was missing. So she was hatless, shoeless and coatless. Never mind lifeless. They had inspected her body and there were scratches and bruises found on her neck. Although there were no signs of a struggle, there were no footprints around her body 
and no sign of a violent struggle. In my mind, I just want to put in my personal thought. In my mind, she didn't seem to be killed at the site she was found. She seemed to have been placed there. How true this is, I don't know because like I said, it's my personal opinion. The first thing, allegedly, that struck Dr. J. Friedman, who was the surgeon for Johannesburg District, was the position of her body. Just like it freaked me out, it freaked this doctor out as well because he was like, hmm, seems like she's perfectly placed here, you know. What the hell is next? She's perfectly placed in this position. It doesn't seem like she died here. They come to the conclusion that Bubbles was not murdered. Bubbles was not murdered at this place she was found. She was murdered somewhere else and then slung, slang, slung over someone's shoulder, carried there and then placed perfectly. Seems about right to me. They then remove Bubbles' body from the crime scene. That's the word, not the site. The crime scene and they take her to postmortem to be examined. There were no signs of sexual assault. But there were pieces of hard clay-like. There were pieces of hard clay-like materials found inside of Bubbles' mouth, throat and digestive tract. They say it's, of course, I don't know why they say it seems. She was definitely choked, suffocated by this clay. And they assume that the murderer shoved this down her throat to make it look like a crime of a black person. Because this is the clay that they were using at that time to build their homes that they would live in. Like, how fucking ridiculous are you? The investigators are questioning both David and Morris. Morris is like, dude, I'm clean. I left that house at quarter past 11. Here's my telephone records to prove that I had called. Because Morris, I forgot to tell you guys this. Morris said he had called the home at around quarter past 11 just to tell them that he had got to his place safely and that they must enjoy their evening. His phone records did state that that was in fact the, the case. The cause of Bubbles' death was determined as asphyxiation, so she choked to death. Whether it be the, the marks around her neck or someone shoving clay down her throat, that's what she died from. The surgeon, Dr. Friedman, had concluded that Bubbles had died around Tuesday morning, 2 a.m. the 12th of August, 1949. Now, I just want to put it out there. I don't want to blame anyone because they do question both David and Harmon for their actions that evening. I just want to put out there that, remember, she had left with Harmon at around half past one, quarter to two. And then Harmon had returned home 20 minutes later, which would be around what? 10 past two? I'm just saying that. Did you watch her get killed? Or did you kill her? The police aren't really narrowing them down as suspects, so they launch... A large-scale search in the Birda Haven area. Unfortunately, nothing was found. People did say they would have a $5,000 reward at that time for any information to do with the case. Her poor mom suffered from extreme depression because Bubbles was her only child. I can understand that. I can really understand that. And the police then concluded that Bubbles could have died in three possible ways. I mean, she could have been killed or succumbed to her death in three possible ways. The first theory is that of Mr. Harmon, which I totally believe. They think that Harmon had tried to sexually assault Bubbles 
and she refused so he strangled her with her own scarf then shoved the clay down her throat to make it look like someone else murdered her he was the last person that was seen with her like the second theory is that bubbles was killed and robbed by a bypasser and the third possible answer is that Bubbles was probably tired of walking. She hitched a lift home with a motorist passing by and he then killed her in his car and placed her body perfectly. I'm quiet because I think there's, there, there are two theories, number two and number three, are absolutely off. What I think happened was Harmon drove miss bubbles home and she was probably like honeying him and going on with him and then he got like really tired of it and choked her out slung her over his shoulder carried her one kilometer into the felt placed her body perfectly then shoved clay down her throat so she could choke to death that's my personal opinion my conclusion is, like I've said, I think Harmon Lieberman, that was his surname, I just remembered it. I personally think that Harmon committed the crime. The, the time is just way too close to not think it was him. If she was picked up by a motorist, Harmon would have definitely seen that. Because he waited for her to walk. Because he had to point her in the, the direction. Harmon and David never um, got questioned any further. Charges by Mrs. Schroeder was never pressed on Harmon nor David. To this day, no one's ever come forward with any information about the mysterious case of Bowles. And I think it's so sad. I think she deserves justice. And a lot of people back in that time thought, well, she was a lady that got money for the company of men. What more do you expect? Um... Please stay safe out there. Don't get into any cars with any strangers or if you feel something isn't right, let anybody around you know. Don't be a shithead and let a girl walk off by herself. That's not safe. I said that this wouldn't be so violent, but it's heavy, man. It's heavy on my heart, these cases like this. I hope that you guys have a great week ahead and i'll see you next week for another true crime tuesday wow.